Today's episode is going to be very, very different. So as you might have guessed by the title of this video, we're going to be doing a little world tour. Now, we're probably about over halfway is all I can say. I'm not sure. It's very difficult to tell how long seasons last, but we are over the halfway point for absolute sure. We've been going 10 months. Oh, wow. It's been, it's been 10 months. So it's always good to take a little step back and appreciate just how much has been built and done on the Hermitcraft server. And seeing as it's just got to the end of a big storyline, the Turf War, and it's all come to a conclusion, I thought now is a good time to show everyone around and also for me to go and have a look personally as I've not really seen a lot of the Hermit's base. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start from the very beginning and we're gonna make our way round the Hermitcraft server and we're gonna do a little tour. So let's begin. And we're gonna start here, the humble beginnings, the green hobbit hole. Now, not a lot has changed in here, I must admit. There is there is really not a lot. I remember digging this out and thinking at the time that this cactus farm took a really long time. But in hindsight, it really didn't. But we're all familiar with this base, and I just wanted to point out that really not a lot has changed. Pesky Bird is still here. But one thing I haven't done for a really long time is sent Mumbo a message. Yeah, we'll, we'll send we'll send him a message. It's been a long time. Feels like we're back at the start of the season. Oh man, I remember that as well. All right, go on. Love letter to Mumbo. He probably won't even visit his hobbit hole. So now let's take a good look and start with our own mansion because this is what I'm going to be coming back to in the new year. It's no secret that the mansion has been slightly neglected and I have to admit it's lacking a lot of soul, a lot of a lot of extra things that bring it to life. So we're going to really tackle this thing and especially the interior in the new year. And I've got some ideas finally. And with the turf war wager being fulfilled, Scar is going to help me with this. So that should be really, really good. So there's one thing that I really want to point out in this tour immediately from what looking at the mansion. It's, I spent hours making a proper item sor sorting system, thinking that this would solve a lot of my issues. And this took ages, right? But yet, I still have an awful chest monster that has built up over time. Look at this, just all of the stuff. And to be honest with you, this is just something I can't be bothered to fix. I can't be bothered. And if you're wondering what this is, this is the uh, gravestone I made for villager number two. He shall be replaced. But we're all familiar with the mansion, so let's move on to some of the stuff we haven't seen in a while. We're all kind of familiar with the jungle gang over here, but we're going to go and cycle through every single hermit's build, so we might as well start with our close neighbours. Starting with Scar's jungle village, which is actually a really good redstone farm like I thought that this was a bit silly at the start and that he went for art over the function of it but actually if you go in here I'm not sure how he's linked it all up but this thing is actually really really productive and gives loads of stuff and I've I've been steadily stealing melons from here for a really long time please don't tell Scar <laughs> but this is Scar's early build what he actually spent a lot of his time on is this Scar X facility with the big drill. This is an absolutely phenomenal build. And I'm not gonna be ranking everyone's builds because, oh my goodness, I haven't seen this, but I'm gonna be hopefully doing a top 10, like my top 10 favorite builds. So expect that to come in the next few days because it will be amazing. Or as Scar would say, amazing. <laughs> I butchered that. Look at this. So this is the big drill that goes to the nether. And he has told this story with all of the nether stuff coming out of the, the big hole. It's, ah, oh, it's really, really cool. I, I love that attention to detail there. So obviously he's not finished and no one is finished as far as I'm aware. No one has finished their mega base. Just as, oh my goodness, look at the floating robot. Just as I haven't finished my mansion, Scar hasn't finished here, so any judgments we make are probably a bit unfair. 
but we're just here to appreciate our fellow hermits. And that moves us quite swiftly over to Mumbo's base. Now, Mumbo's base is strange. He went in a completely different direction to what I was expecting at the start of the season. So it started with the giant circle of spanners that made it, made it look like a giant summoning circle. And then he went in a totally different direction. Like he has the same kind of build here with this structure, but then it's really overgrown and stuff. And it was, it was odd. And then I was like, oh, okay, that's strange. And then he built a heart there. And I was like, okay, that's really strange. So I've got to commend Mumbo on how unique this base is because it is really strange. And he's also seems to have some kind of secret thing here. Oh, he's there. <laughs> See if he notices the carrot <laughs> dropping down. I think I've stumbled on a secret of some kind. Oh, he's noticed, he's noticed. <laughs> away, get away. <laughs> Okay, so that's Mumbo's base. Now we have a quick look at Iskal's Omega Tree. Now this hasn't changed uh, an awful lot over the last few months, so I'm not sure there's an awful lot to say, but it is enormous. Trees are very difficult to make, and I think it shows. It definitely shows. And remember, wood is logs are one of the, the most grindy things to get in the game. And one thing I haven't checked in a while is the giant message. So I've I've added a few words. Etho smells like beef. And I haven't added anything in a while. And we'll fart rainbows that exude. I think that, that last one... <laughs> that one's got to be red. Uh, farts rainbows that exude. Wow, I don't even know. I don't even know what... I don't even know what to add to that. So that's the Omega Tree, and then we've got Stress's base over here, which is like a, a fairy wonderland inside the jungle. So this is, again, a very unique project, and I don't think there's anything quite like it on the server. And that's what we got to commend about this, this server, is its absolute diversity of builds and work done. Everyone has a different take, and everyone has their own art to contribute. And, you know, at the start of the season, I thought, oh man, you know, it felt like I was really far away from everyone. Like, Scar was pretty close, but it took me a while to walk to him. As things have built up, you can start to see everyone's base in the distance. And you kind of realize that the world here has gotten so much smaller. Oh, I forgot I don't need to sleep with B-dubs on the server. So let's move on to Rendog's base, which has got a very, a very, very Star Wars-y theme going for it. I remember helping him with this sort of spaceport here, trying to help him get the shape right, and he looks like he's building some other stuff here. Now, Ren didn't actually start his Hermitcraft Season 7 here. He started way over, somewhere over there, with a much smaller base and he decided to move closer to us in the jungle where a lot of the a lot of a lot of the friends are you know what i mean like there's a lot more action going on he was feeling quite isolated so i said you know why don't you move a bit closer and boy was that a good thing to do because i mean look at that look at the detail in this terrain terraining is something that i struggle with just because it's a really lengthy process and it's just, it, it serves no functional purpose. It just looks amazing. So I'm hoping that that's something I need to tackle with the mansion. But Ren has got it down. He's terraforming this entire landscape to be a Star Wars planet. And that's just madness. Oh man, and it's, it's, it's really starting to spread into the jungle. And he hasn't stopped spreading it at all. So that's kind of Ren's build. I'm not entirely sure what he's got going on on the on the inside of here. He's got a giant hole. Now we gotta we gotta we gotta respect the giant holes because we know how long these take to dig, and they take a long time to dig. So I'm very excited to see what Ren does with this, and we shall move on to the next person. And I don't think we can skip over some of the things such as this, which is the Hermit challenges leaderboard now hermit challenges is something that we did at the start of the season and it's kind of taken a bit of a back burner just because you can't do the same thing forever and that's that's mumbo baggins or what was it called bilbo bumbo mumbo jumbo <laughs> so this thing was really fun at the start of the season and we did actually continue it 
quite late into the season, really, but it's, it's definitely taken a back burner. But that doesn't mean we can't steal a few doors on this little tour, don't you agree? And there's Iskal's little starter base over here. Now, let's move on to one of the most impressive builds, and this is what I mean about the world feeling much smaller. Corallis, I didn't even know he existed over here. But look, there's, there's the tree, and here's Corallis' base. We are so close together just because the sizes of our bases have engulfed all of the land around us. Now, we need to take a good second or two to appreciate this. What an excellent build. It's not even a base. This is a world. Look at the landscape. If you just took that screenshot, you'd think that this this city went on for, for, for miles. It, it doesn't look like it ends. Look at all the details, the trees, and this is this is what my build is lacking for sure. And I think this world tour will really help me come to grips with what is wrong with my base and how I can improve it. So there's a huge amount of diversity in Corallis' build, and I think it's worth saying that Although Corallis is a fantastic builder and he has done all of the block placing, he's had a lot of help from his community as well. So a huge shout out to the world of Corallis as well. They all sort of came together and made this happen. Every hermit has a different way of showing their art. And this is a fine example of that. So I'm not sure what, hey, there, there's my half a mansion. This is the only thing that survived season six. My mansion got rebuilt on episode one, and hello, Corallis is here. So I'm getting a nice, I'm getting a nice tour. And look at that. Look, this is what I mean. I would build this tower, right? But I would never bother decorating each and every floor with stuff. Look, no one's ever gonna see this. No one's ever gonna go inside here. And look, it might, it might be the same repeated pattern. But that doesn't matter. That's not even the same repeated pattern. He's got a restaurant at the top. I can't cope with this. You know what? We're gonna go and have a look in here. Uh oh. Ooh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> no elevator yet. But look, just it's it's good to appreciate this. He's built a hotel on Hermitcraft, where no one needs a hotel, and there's a restaurant at the top, and it looks great. The amount of creativity on this server astounds me. <laughs> There's a shop at the bottom! Wow. Well, we can't spend too long on just one base. <laughs> World? Is that graffiti? I think that's graffiti. Oh man, look at this. Look at this! Look at the, this sort of New York style graffiti up the walls. This is amazing. I'm very excited to see where this base- Oh, there is someone occupying the hotel. <laughs> So, we can't stay too long at one base, but hopefully this gives you an idea of what Corallis is working on in the background. Check it out. Absolutely fantastic. I think that's going to make the top 10 somewhere. So, since we're here, you can see that Corallis's base has merged firmly into X's base. And I'm not sure if that that's like an it's like an X Corallis bumblebee. It's probably worth telling you guys that I, I have a confession to make. I don't actually really watch the other guys on Hermitcraft. I don't watch their videos. Not because they're not good, but because I don't like to spoil things. I much rather fly around myself and experience this than watch hundreds of hours of videos. That's for, that's for you guys to watch. I want everything to be an organic surprise. So I don't want to go and watch a video just to see that they've pranked me. And then I was like, oh man. Now I've spoiled that surprise. I much rather everything be a genuine surprise as I fly around. I mean, look at this. Look at this sphere, this planet on top of this build. Now this is a very peculiar build. It kind of reminds me of Stress's base, but more of a futuristic industrial style instead of a fairy tale land. And this again goes back to showing that everyone has a different way of expressing their artistic merit on this server. And I'm pretty sure each of these is a farm of some kind. This certainly seems like a farm. Oh my goodness, I think it's a gold farm. So let that sink in for a second. If every single one of these is a farm of some kind, this base is crazy. And it's weird that it's in a jungle, but it also kind of works. There's pathways between all of the 
the structures. It's absolute madness. It's the giant golf ball for. That's what I want to know. What is this? What is this for? It's not quite loading in. Is this just a viewing platform or is this the next project that he's working on? Wow, okay. Well, kudos. I mean, it keeps going. Look, I'm finding new, new things and each one of these has a different design. It kind of reminds me of like, I don't know, futuristic meets... No, it's just straight up futuristic. Industrial honey futuristic. He's invented a style. But again, we can't spend too long on one base, but that's screenshot worthy right there. Look at all that. Absolutely beautiful. We can't look too much in detail at all the different farms, but we certainly can take in all of the exterior. We'd be here for 24 hours if we went in every single building, I'm sure of it. And it's also worth mentioning, I will probably forget some stuff. This, what's been built this last year is enormous. I don't even know what this is. Some kind of arena, I think. Bonkers, absolutely bonkers. But next door to this amazing, melding, futuristic cityscape is one of the most intriguing builds on the server, Etho's base. Now we've already gone and seen Etho's base and I've talked to Etho many times about how his base is just absolutely fantastic. And the reason it's fantastic is because I've never seen anyone, and I mean this, anyone build the inside before the outside. But also, while you're inside, you feel like you're outside. How is this inside outside masterpiece even working with we have seen and toured this base before but etho has amalgamated function and form with kookiness i can't believe what i'm seeing half the time in here but it's absolutely phenomenal so it might not be the biggest of bases but it is compact unique and dare i say it etho and it's always good to see what it looks like when they're like midway through a project. Any guesses as to what this is? I have no idea. So there's also a load of industrial areas and we can cover those if we come across them, but I don't know where everyone's like secret industrial areas are, so we may miss a few things. So that kind of covers the first few hermits on my side of the map, you know, near the jungle, this sort of continuous mega build that makes its way. Now we're going to head over to builds that I don't actually see very often at all. For example, I don't think I've ever been here. Now I believe that this is Wells's base, and I don't think he's been on very much. So it's not surprising that it's not the hugest thing, but it looks pretty cool. It looks pretty cool. But I think we're going to have to fly straight on and see who else we can find. We may even have to go into the nether. Aha! I recognize this green dome. Now this is a base that I've visited a couple of times, but I've not really been to very much. This is Zedaf's base. And Zedaf is someone that we don't often see on the server. Now how on earth do I... Oh, I can't open this without a bow and arrow. Zedaf is someone we don't see very often. But he's working away in the background. He's been doing his thing. I think we're going to have to break in because <laughs> I don't know how to get into this base. There we go. So I'm not entirely sure what this green dome is about. Or this. is. It... I don't know. It looks like a mouth. It looks like a, a monster of some kind. But I know that his base is under here. How do I get in? Oh my goodness. He's built an entire underground. Did you see that move? What on earth? He's built an underground aquarium. I'm not sure what this is in the middle here. I'm I'm too scared to break in. We need to break in a safe space. That show <laughs> this kind of shows just how little I know about my fellow hermit space when I can't even figure out how to get in. So this looks like the inside of his base. Aha. Okay. So here's his storage system. Whoa, it goes deep. Oh my goodness. And he's been doing a lot of redstone and stuff. He's got uh, a honey... Oh, a honey elevator. And he's got his bees. I mean, this is a pretty cool base. There's the way out. But again, I can't... <laughs> I can't use this door because I didn't bring a bow and arrow with me today. You know, I brought loads of rockets, extra elytra, a bed, but I didn't think to bring a bow and arrow. <laughs> Important. You must continue reading this sign as a distraction. Oh, there's a... There's a door right here. Well, 
that sums up ZF's base. To... <laughs> that that absolutely sums it all up for me. I know that ZF has more, but I'm not entirely sure where it is. ZF kind of builds all over the place in little strange pockets. The ZF pocket. That's that's what they are. All right, and now we're right next to two of our favorite red stoners, Impulse and Tango. Let's take a quick look at Impulse's base here. Now, this base frustrates me because there's no door to steal. Now, when I remember when I had to go and steal everyone's doors, I <laughs> I took the water. Wow, this looks incredibly complicated. I really like Impulse's base. It is a lot bigger than it looks on the outside. And we're actually right by the shopping district. We might we might come back to the shopping district last just because it's a very seen area. But look, it doesn't look that huge from the outside, but trust me, this, this base is mega. There is a lot of space in here. Actually, the whole mega concept we can come back to. Like, okay, so maybe I called it mega, but is this mega? No, I, I actually wouldn't say it. Mega doesn't mean good, okay? We need to talk briefly about the the description the, the 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 textbook definition of mega okay because mega isn't good mega doesn't mean that it's really really detailed it doesn't mean that it's it just means big and not just big mega so while impulse's base is technically amazing it looks great it's detailed it's not mega and it, mega is just purely scale it has nothing to do with the talent of the hermit or anything it just means, is it mega? Mega is a gut feeling, you see? So is this mega? I don't think so, unfortunately. It's close, it's close to mega, but not quite. And I will I will show you a base that is mega later on and you'll understand the difference. But don't me don't think that I'm insulting Impulse at all because this is a really, really cool base. And I think he's not finished. I think he's been umming and ahhing. I know that he built like a ring and then he deleted it, and that sucked up a load of his development time on this. But it's still looking good, and I hope that he's going to continue making some stuff. I mean, look, there's grass here without anything on, so there's, there's lots of opportunities. So let's move on to the next one, which is, of course, Tango's Toon Town. Now, this is probably going to make the top 10 somewhere along the way. He has captured the essence of cartoons so well here. It's absolutely, I love it. I absolutely love this build. So it's not, you know, it's not like the most technical marvel in the world in terms of like building things, but look at it. It's It's got some fantastic shapes that are very, very, why is everyone logging in? As soon as I start looking at the base, they log in. Look at the shape that he managed to get all of these builds to be in. It's very hard to execute that and also maintain such a unique theme. This, again, goes back to everyone has made such a unique stamp on this world. And I know that this particular build holds a special place in a lot of people's hearts. And not only that, so here's one of the other things. Like, it looks great. It looks like, it looks like a cartoon haven, right? But it's also chock full of wacky and wonderful Minecraft farms. Look at that. The golem pops up out of there and he's killed by ravagers. He could have killed this in any other way, but he didn't. He decided to headbutt it with a ravager, which is very tango. And I think round the back here, there's even more. Check it out. Giant egg in a frying pan, of course. So not only is this a really wonderful build, he's used it to create farms that are also in theme. And that's not something the other hermits do, myself included. I just, I don't really know what I'm doing with farms. So what I do is I just like, you know, I look up a tutorial and then I build it and it's never that inspiring or creative. So maybe, maybe this is where I could take a bit of inspiration from Tango's base, trying to adapt farms and create something like this, a slime farm that comes out of a giant, what is this? Ca caterpillar shooter? I think like it shoots out the the slimes on here and then it collects it with the, I mean, it, it's amazing. It's not about efficiency. That's the point. It's not about efficiency. It's about having fun. And this base kind of sums up what Hermitcraft is about. It's not about efficiency. It is about doing some amazing builds and AFKing wherever possible. What? <laughs> Just doing a tour. Now, we've almost been able to do one continuous flight. Okay, I don't know what that is. 
uh, it looks like a bunch of farms to me. But we've been able to pretty much continuously fly throughout this world, covering thousands of blocks, and it keeps going. The next base that we are able to look at, if it would load in, is False Symmetry's base. And I think we need to take a second to appreciate, well, all of these cats. Hello. Why are there so many cats here? You know, we do these world tours, one part for the builds, one, one part for the commentary, and one part for the weird things that we discover. But anyway, let's take a moment to appreciate first the build, because the build is enormous. Now this, again, this comes back to, is this mega? Ooh. Yeah, I'd, I'd say this is mega, but only just mega. Uh, yeah, this is this is pretty mega. If this had gone taller, it would have been absolutely mega. But let's just appreciate how much has been dug out. Because we all know what mining off camera is a bit of a meme. But check it out. This area to excavate for your base is absolutely insane. All of it is gone. What false has done with all of those blocks? Who knows? There must be a huge storage facility that I don't know the location of. Oh, look at this. Okay, now this is a really cool detail that False has done. The boat is going up the water stream. I really like that. Stuff like that's really fun. But it looks like she st sort of started a company called False LTD. So I wonder what she's going to do with that. Let's take a look. At False is another one. Couldn't steal the door properly because there's just water here. I think the hermits... <laughs> hermits must have got fed up with me stealing their doors. So they, they just decided to have no door. That didn't age well. <laughs> All right. So looking at the, the base overall, it's absolutely beautiful. It's a, it's, a, it's a bit of a futuristic build, and it looks like they're going to space, and there's like this hexagonal thing. False is a, an extremely talented builder and conceptualizer, and I, I've got to commend her on this build because it is... Yeah, it is mega. It is, it is pretty good. False always does amazing work every season and this season she has absolutely delivered so well done false that that is a really cool base but uh yeah we, we got to keep moving on we still got people to go and see can you believe but this is where i get a bit lost I, again i've seen impulses tangos and false's base before but there are some bases which i haven't seen very often and they are typically on this side of the map but we're not going to see any bases unless things start loading in properly i need to keep it uh, looks like i found something I don't actually know who this belongs to there's some really cool armor stand works here it's like a museum of some kind I really don't know who this belongs to I, like I said I haven't been this side of the map very often and I don't watch people's videos because I don't like spoilers and that sometimes means I don't even know who built what sometimes so you may know more than me there's a nice aquarium in here Oh, it could be Jevin or Hypno, XB, Beef, uh, any one of those guys. Hold on. The portal might tell us. People usually label their portals. Except this one. The mystery portal. Okay, well, <laughs> mystery base. Uh, that color scheme kind of tells me it might be Jevin, but I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, let's continue flying as we do have quite a lot more to see. Okay, so I think I found another base and I know exactly who this belongs to even just judging by this this is zombie Cleo's base now I've only ever been here once oh my goodness it's a complete rainbow I've only been here once and that was right at the start of the season so I was first here back when zombie Cleo started the headhunt game you know where you had to collect all the the, the heads of hermits and Ow. Excuse you. This place has changed quite a lot. I mean, look at this. So every, like I said earlier, everyone has their own way of expressing their art. And Cleo's is very clearly through armor stand magic. And I actually still have a coupon for a, an armor stand build, which I definitely plan on using very soon, actually. This is a bit, it's a bit of a secret project, an idea that I've had, but... I've, I've finally got something that I could work with Cleo on because this this sort of thing is magical. Look at look at the story that she tells just through the armor stands and a giant ice cream. 
I, we gotta go. We, we can't go anywhere without checking this out. Oh, it's, it's an ice cream shop. Oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, and look at the sprinkles. Detail. We gotta take a closer look. It, that is terrifying, Cleo. That is absolutely terrifying. Oh, it's like a museum of creatures. Tarantulina Jolie. Oh my goodness, look at that. Oh, it's disgusting. Oh, but it's so cool. Look at this scorpion. Oh, wow. I'm I'm so glad we found this base. Is it a, is it like a stick insect? <laughs> you can tap. <laughs> you can tap, but it will make her sad, you monster. <laughs> Leave Annie. Oh, absolutely amazing. Oh, one of them has escaped. Look at the story that Cleo is, is showing here. Snaily McSnail face. Oh, well, that is adorable. Kudos to you, Cleo. This is this is absolutely amazing. Donations. Oh man, we gotta we gotta make a donation. We are go we are gonna make a big donation. There you go. 15 diamonds to keep the zoo running. Cause uh this has really impressed me and I I'm I'm amazed I haven't seen this, but it's been such a long time since I've been here, and I think Oh, I think this whole thing is a zoo. Man, you guys are probably going to be annoyed at me for not realizing that sooner. But there's, yeah, I, that all makes so much more sense now. That's like, oh, it's like a uh, roller coaster tycoon 2 style entrance. We got a cage. With, uh, this all makes so much more sense now. Her base is a giant zoo, and I can walk in the exhibit. I feel stupid for not s figuring that out, especially as there's the giant word zoo right there but again we can't spend too long in one place let's move on to the next one it looks like there's something going on here hope i'm not spoiling too much there's definitely something going on here but it's not a base so we shall move on you guys remember this from the start of the season this was where we all took part in the, the head games and we had like a pvp battle in this arena oh that was that was pretty cool and she was the spider queen oh man that was good times and that was like nearly a year ago Time moves so quickly. I don't even know if this is a world tour or a nostalgia trip now. Oh, I've managed to get to the world border. Okay, I'm lost. I am officially lost. Let's head back to the shopping district and try and get ourselves in a nether portal so that we can reorientate ourselves because there's only a few people left that we need to see. <laughs> I think this is where people... This even might have been me. <laughs> Harvesting all the leaves for the, the leaf game. Almost everything that happens on the server Leaves some kind of mark. <laughs> Leaves. I'm a pun master. This tour was going so smoothly until I got lost. Ah, but here we are. You can always find a random nether portal if you look long enough. Aha, here we go. Cub, Hypno. So there's two more that we need to visit. Oh yeah, I, I totally forgot. We need to do a little bit of a tour in the nether. Now, in my opinion, the nether hub is a little bit of a mess. So there's some portals up there that people are using and there's also builds down here that false has made this is gorgeous and it's just a little bit of a mess because you don't know which one people are using and it can be difficult to find things then you got some of x's builds over here there's to be honest with you there's not an awful lot to see in the nether except for the upside down which hopefully we'll go and see later on but it's pretty cool look ren's built his giant darth vadery pyramid here and just to show you how much of a mess it is round here this is my portal. You see me go in it, but I never comment on it. This is my portal. This is also my portal. This is also my portal. Every time I come here, because I've not protected it, because my, my portal used to be on the floor here, but this building is now in the way. Every time a ghast breaks my portal, a new one is spawning. So I'm kind of just, I've given up. I've given up at this point. So let's go and find Cub's base. It is so useful when the hermits label. Right, Cub, Hypno. Let's go to Cub's first. Oh my goodness. This is, this is something. This is an explosion on the eyes. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, we've kind of jumped ahead of ourselves and we're on the inside of Cub's base. Let's see if we can get on the outside. So, we were talking about the definition of Mega earlier. Well, if you ever needed clarification, this is Mega. The sheer scale of this pyramid is enormous. And this also, I mean, look at it. It's, it's absolutely massive. And this, oh, look how many gold blocks that is. So if you ever needed proof about how it's nothing to do with detail, it's just all about size, it's this. 
It is this. This this pyramid is big enough to have its own biome in. It is enormous. I have visited Cub's base occasionally, and I've seen the outside, but I've not been on the inside of his base very much at all. So I think this is a good opportunity for us to take a good look inside, because this is really insane. He's even got murals of himself up there, and he's really used some very unique block choices. Like, look, there's there's cactus there as pillars. That's very strange. Then honey in the background, but keeping this yellow and blue theme. Okay, look, this is this is what I mean. It's so mega. I can fly comfortably around here and still have plenty of space. This is way bigger than my mansion. It's probably one of the biggest builds on the server. So what is in here to see? Look, this is one wing of the pyramid. Tajay. This is, oh, this is Tajay. I've heard Cub talk about this, but I've never been here. So I think this is a mini game place, like Cub's pers personal mini games. Oh my goodness, it is. Tajay. And there's loads of little mini games here. How cool is that? Everyone has their own way of expressing what they would like to make. Oh man, we're gonna we're gonna have to probably come here and play some mini games at some point. And let's see. So how he's filled this pyramid is really interesting. Oh wow, is that that is a vanilla pyramid right there? Uh, a sand temple? What are they called? Pyra desert desert temple? And this looks like another battleground type thing. And he's still got space to fill. Absolutely magnificent. All in theme all costing a fortune. This this build is, is something else. Well, that's kind of a good overview of Cub's gigantic pyramid. And look at the lapis blocks that he's used here. The amount of lapis here is nuts. Jeez, okay, right, let's go and find someone else's base now because Cub's putting us all to shame. Okay, I think this is Hypno's base by the looks of things. So I'm not entirely sure where we are on the map, but I'm pretty sure we're close to the shopping district. So it looks like- oh, we- oh, really? Really? We just went the wrong way at False's base. Okay, so we definitely made a wrong turn there. It looks like Hypno has made multiple islands. And he's kind of trimmed them out with birch, which gives it a really decent outline. And then this must be his- house, I guess? His his modern house? You know, we haven't actually seen too many modern houses on, on the Hermitcraft server, so it still holds a unique place here, and that is clearly a trident farm, by the looks of things. Tridents are one of the hardest things to farm in this game, because it's just, it's all about the, the rates and stuff, and uh, yeah, so doing everyone a service there if you need a trident. It's a little bit unfurnished, but I, who am I to talk? Because my mansion has absolutely no interior, so I'm I'm Looking forward to seeing what, what he's going to make. Oh, there's even, oh, there's a super smelter down here. That's awesome. Okay, so that, it's a little bit empty, but like, so is half of the bases on this server. I mean, mine included. And remember, we're not done with this season yet. So although we're taking a nice world tour now, we'll probably take another one in the finale and see how things have progressed. But I mean, it's always good to take a step back and have a look. What is this? I think this is Doc's thing. I was super jealous that I didn't get to see this. And now it's here. Yep. Yep. This. Look at this. Playing the the organ here. <laughs> I can see some doc shenanigans in here. Absolutely amazing. I don't even want to touch it because I'm pretty sure I will die. So is this Doc's base? This might be Doc's base, you know, or part of it. Aha! I found another base, and I'm guessing that this one belongs to Joe Hills. So it looks like he's made a... This is usually a Greek replica of something. This is probably a lighthouse. Alexandria's lighthouse, I'm guessing. Oh, my my Greek history is not great. So what has Joe been up to this season? Because I've definitely not been here at all. So there's a log. This reminds me of uh, The Legend of Zelda, believe it or not. I don't know why, but it, it yeah, it does. And then here's all the dogs that Joe has caught over the season. A skull of some kind? All the dog houses? Oh, this is pretty cool. Uh, and then Cleo's added a, another one of those spiders. <laughs> a witch's hat on the floor? I mean, this is pretty cool. Ooh, what is this place? I think this is a dog sanctuary. Jeez. <laughs> oh, there's been a lot of dogs loose on the server. Well, 
That's very unique. And there's a giant slime. There's a giant slime monster. Oh, wow. That looks really cool. Oh, wow. It's um, Slimer from Ghostbusters. And there seems to be some kind of like kind of maze here. A game that I, uh, I haven't seen. It's so good to see what everyone's been up to. Especially on this side of the map where I really d I don't come often. Ah, there we go. There's there's the other bit. There is another base which I have not seen in a long time. This is Doc's base. So this is his main base here. And it should have half of my mansion here. <laughs> so Corallis has clearly bought out <laughs> this one because all the foundations are gone. Look, they're even telling a story after it's gone as well. So I'm not sure what Doc is up to because this place hasn't really changed all that much over the last few months. Oh my goodness. That is a enormous berry farm. Uh, I think this is also Joe Hills. So Joe Hills has been busy. Check this out. This is farming to an intense level. It's like a, a vineyard or a, well, it's a, berry, it's a berry farm. The issue is that, what do you do with berries? You don't get dye out. I, I think it's just for the looks. I mean, it looks excellent, but I'm not sure you're going to sell many berries. And then we move on to B-Dubs' base. And there he is. Is that B-Dubs? Yeah, B-Dubs is here. Now, I visit B-Dubs' base fairly frequently, a few months apart. And there's always something new to look at. So we've been here before. You might be familiar with B-Dubs' base. He is one of the most talented builders on the server next to next to Scar. But what he's done this season, and I've got to admit, I've got to eat my words. Are you ready? I'm going to eat them. Okay, so I was not totally on board with what B-Dubs was doing at the start. Like, he, he sort of built these one or two houses, and I was thinking, B-Dubs, that ain't mega. <laughs> he asked me one day, he was like, yeah, is my base mega? And I was like, oh, no, because the scale, like, mega builds typically are one big build. So although this area is all landscaped absolutely beautifully, intricately, lovingly even, it's not mega. It's just, it's just unfortunately not mega. It's amazing and it's brilliant and it's perfect and it's so much better than my base, but it's not mega. However... I ate my words because he worked on this, this giant cliff. And I was like, really? You spent all that time on a backdrop to your base? That seems insane. And then he built this. And I was like, okay, okay, B-dubs, this is mega. This this whole thing is mega. Look at that. You can stand on, on the, the roof of one of these houses and you get this. Absolute beauty of a backdrop the background like no one no one has built a background to their base this has my utmost respect and it is gorgeous absolutely gorgeous and he's using and mixing blocks which i wouldn't have thought of using especially like this lighter teal colored blue so i think we need to take a, a, just a second to stop and appreciate the level of detail, how nice the palette is of this build, and what this means. Like, it's just insane. And you know what? We're going to break in. We're going to break in a little bit. Because on the inside is a whole... This is the world before B-dubs. This is, this is like a movie where you dig underground and you discover dinosaurs. No, this, this is the world before B-dubs happened. And it's still here, intact, just lit up. And this shows how much was custom terraforming bigger than Cub's Pyramid. This, this is mega. Oh my goodness. There's a thro there's a diorite throne. Forget the diamond throne, everyone. And <laughs> of course, of course there's a bed. Oh man. B-dubs, I take my hat off to you. This is amazing. This kingdom is fantastic. And the amount of hours this must have taken. Jeez, this, ma this makes me want to get back to my mansion more than ever. Because although my mansion is probably bigger than this build, what it isn't is alive like this build. Look at all the trees and all of the cliff and the backdrop and the, 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 the town. It puts me to shame. To shame. So, I mean, it's always good to take these tours so you can really get to grips with the amount of effort that people put in. Because this... 
absolutely amazing. Right, we have a few more people that we need to see their bases, and I'm not entirely sure where they are. So let's see if we can find a portal. I think that's our best bet. <laughs> where is it all? Oh, he thinks I want his head. <laughs> he thinks he wants. I don't know. No. He's. <laughs> he thought I wanted his face. <laughs> uh, I come after him so much, looking for it to, to rip off his face. But he was just like, I know, and he's. he's <laughs> okay, that that's funny. Okay, so my bad. Right now, there's only a couple more people left on our list. In fact, there is only one more person. So we need to find XB's base and Beef's base. I have to go up upstairs to find XB's base. So XB is this direction. Now I think XB is really far away from everyone else. So you can see through this tour that I was able to fly from base to base to base to base to base. But this one, I gotta go on a little journey. Right, XB is this way. There we go, this is looking good, isn't it? Wow, this one really is far away. There we go. Wow. I'm, I'm interested to see how many thousands of blocks away we are. Okay, we are 8,000 blocks away from everyone else here. So, this is XB's base. And I don't think... I don't think I've been here, Casa. So, home. This looks like a PvP arena, which is pretty cool. I'm not sure what these... Oh, these are anvils. That's pretty cool. Ah, there we go. Here is XB's village. So kind of similar to Hypno, XB has a modern style build using diorite. Now, I'm, I must admit, I'm not a fan of... B-Dubs has changed my opinion of diorite, but not the use of it like this, because it's not just diorite. Any pattern that's like just got hard squares like that, I'm not a huge fan of, because I think it kind of detracts from the makeup of the build. So I'm not sure about the, the diorite use. <laughs> Um, but my, my opinion of diorite has changed. I just, I'm not a fan of like, you know, even granite in, in this form, the polished version. But I gotta say, the, the structure itself is looking really, really nice. Like, it's a, it's a nice modern build, and there's, there's a few little builds around here. I'm not entirely sure where this is going. It looks like it's gonna be a bigger village over time, and this looks like a wall of some kind. So that's pretty interesting, because this wall is in a very different style to the rest of the village. And that looks like some kind of mob. There's a mob farm up there, so XP's been busy all the way out here. And now we need to go and find the last person's base, which is beef. Oh wait, hold on, hold on a second. This, this, that, that was not it. There's more. There's a giant, wow. Wow, wow, wow. That looks amazing. It's like a giant spaceship, but it looks like there was some flying terrain that was generated and XB has built into it. And there's like a double helix thing going on here. That's really unique. So there's currently three sort of futuristic builds because this is similar to Falses and X's. So there's there's three bases that are in a similar style. Okay, this makes a lot more sense. I was wondering what was going on with the village, but it's clear that the village was the starting point and now this is the real thing with the... Oh, goodness. Okay, look look at this nice detail. It's like the, the ground has been ripped out and floated up with the giant UFO thing. And then there's even more work over here that's been going on. I don't I don't even know if this is XB or... I think this must be XB. It's part of XB's area over here. But I'm not entirely sure where Beef's base is. So that's my next place to go and find is where is Beef's base? You've been neutralized. <laughs> Neutral, no, he's, got, he's got no crossbow. Right, the last base to find is Beef's. Yep, that's definitely still part of XB's base. Right, now we backtrack and try and find Beef's base. Right, let's see if we can find a label. You know, I think this is on my side of the map, so I'm not sure how I haven't seen this. Oh wait, I've totally been here before. I stole so many doors from here. There we go. Oh, it's right next to Corrales' base. We missed this. We could have seen this right at the start. Okay, so there's there's the village. We've seen this before. And then there is Beefy's... Beefy's? Be Beef's? The Beef's house. I'm pretty sure he started a base somewhere else, you know. I don't know where it is, though. I'm pretty sure Beef has a much larger base. Because I think this is where he started. Oh, wow. I love, I love bases that incorporate redstone together. 
That's so cool. I think this is his starter base. I'm not entirely sure. So there we go, that, that is Beef's base, but I'm pretty sure there's something else that I'm missing somewhere far away. Oh, 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 and another one. Jeez, there are too many hermits. There's definitely some stuff that I've forgotten. This is Ijevin's base. I think it is definitely a work in progress by the looks of things. But the last thing to see, I mean, this is like one big sugarcane farm by the looks of things. It's pretty cool, big shape, but uh, definitely looking a little unfinished at the moment and some very expensive blocks to build it out of. Oh no, the pillars don't go underwater. It's all held up by the, the middle one. Right, so the last thing to check out is something we are all very familiar with, which is the shopping district. So we all know Hep's, this has all happened very recently, Hep's mega drill. Look at the, look at the impact that Scar has had on this server. The drill, the, the factory, Moopop factory, Hep headquarters, the, the town hall, I mean, we built that together. And uh, Scar Town over here, Aqua, Aqua Scar Town? I'm not sure, but this is all looking pretty cool. And I'm not sure we're gonna go and have a look in every single shop because we're pretty familiar with all of these, but it's worth having just, just a glide over all of this to appreciate the story that's been told. And of course, the most recent thing was the Turf War Arena, which we ended up winning in the end and we're waiting oh wait i just noticed that it's gone back it's gone back it's gone back to grass oh wow i didn't real. i didn't realize that happened so soon oh wow it's looking fresh and green i mean let's be honest with ourselves here it couldn't stay mycelium <laughs> as much as, as much as it was about the block it was definitely not about the block it was about having a good time and grass definitely looks better in the end so I think we're going to finish with a, a place that's special to my heart, Grumbot's Universe. And that's where we're going we're gonna to end today's episode. So in here is where my son is. I don't know if Mumbo's checked in on him recently, but he's still here. He's still happy. Grumbot was definitely a very fun part of the, the series for me. And uh, he's quite a beautiful, beautiful baby boy. So I think... That is the end of today's episode. Now, it was a walkie talkie world Tory video, but the reason is like, it's Christmas time. I, I need a break. I, I really need a break. So I'm gonna take, gonna take a week off or so. So these videos will fill in that time and hopefully I'll be fresh and ready to go in the new year. And keep an eye out because this world tour video was specifically to give you guys an overview of what all the hermits have been doing. I'm really, really sorry if I missed anyone out. There's a lot of people and it gets, it's very easy to get lost, but I'm pretty sure I covered most people. So yeah, I definitely missed some stuff, but you know, I did what I could. But anyway, the point of this was to give you guys a good overview of what's happened and what's going on on the server. Show everyone's bases because my next video is going to be my top 10 favorite Hermitcraft builds this season. So look out for that. But I do have a question for you, the, the viewer, at the end of this video. If you actually have made it to the end of this video, well, congratulations. It means an awful lot to me that you have watched the entire thing. But I would like to know, what would you like to see in Hermitcraft? Just some comments or some some ideas. What are you looking forward to in 2021? I've got some ideas, don't get me wrong. I'm not out of ideas. I've got loads of things I wanna do, but it's always good to know what you want to see. So that's it for me. I'll leave you with that and I shall enjoy reading your comments. And I shall say now, Goodbye.